you know, I haven't read a book that is this good since I read the Dark Materials trilogy back. And this, my librarian said, is one of the only pretty much fantasy books that I haven't read. So, well, hello, fellow book questers. It is I, Aaron the Book Quester, and today I have this pretty awesome book. Ink Heart, from the author of the international bestsellers The Thief Lord and Dragon Rider, Cornelia Fug. You know, I still remember Dragon Rider. It was a great book, and well, let's get right on to it. This book is about a girl named Maggie who has a father who is a bookbinder, book who she calls Mo. One day, this man named Dustfingers arrives at the middle of the night, warning them that Capricorn, Capricorn is coming, and he's coming for the book. And Maggie doesn't understand that at the time, but Mo does, and he starts to, he seems very, very worried. And with Maggie, Mo, and Dustfingers, they together run to a place of Elinor. Elinor is a real bookworm. She is an incredible book collector and has so many books in her private library. And she has so many valuable books and there Mo tries to hide this one incredibly rare book. Now we don't know what that book is, but obviously this Capricorn fellow, fellow wants it. And Capricorn, he is the devil himself. Well, not literally, of course, figuratively. He's a very, very bad man. Then Basta and some villains, who are apparently the henchmen of this mysterious Capricorn, break into Eleanor's house and take grabs and takes Mo and the book. But then Maggie finds out that the book wasn't actually the real book that they wanted. The bo actual book is called Inkheart. And our dear Elinor had switched out the actual book for the, um, a fake one so that she could read it because she always wanted to read a good book. Now, they, now we want to go back and Maggie, very desperate to save her father, decides that she would go on a desperate trade to trade Inkheart, a, the book that Capricorn so desperately wanted for his, her father. And so they follow Dustfingers, who seems to know where Capricorn hides out. And they go to Capricorn's village, which looks like some sort of medieval village thing. And all his henchmen and all his little bad guys live there. Then we have a bad situation. We find out that Dustfinger has betrayed us. And the fact that Dustfingers had only gotten them and brought them here just so that Capricorn could have the bug. And Capricorn had promised Dustfingers that he would send Dustfingers home using Silver Tongue, which is the name that the book that the cat that these evil evil men use for Mo. And then when Maggie's trapped with in the dungeon with Mo with Eleanor, we hear the full story. Capricorn, Basta, and the henchmen, they are all characters, including Dustfingers, from the book Inkheart. And Mo had found out that he had the ability to read out a book so perfectly that it would come to life and the characters inside the book could come out, which is absolutely mad. And that one day when Mo was reading out the book Inkheart to his wife and Maggie, well, Capricorn, Basta, and Dustfingers popped out of there. And that, that really isn't good. And Mo managed to get out there alive, but her, his, uh, his dear, his dear wife, well, she is taken into the world of Inkart, switched out with Dustfingers, Basta, and of course, Capricorn. And that means that we have a story tale villain with no remorse, no humanity whatsoever. He is in our world. And he is willing to do whatever he wants. Then, thankfully, we find out that Capricorn, he wasn't trying to get all the ink card books. He wanted to burn them all except one so that he could read it and bring people, his henchmen, from the book if he wanted to. But 
no one else could try to bring him back into that world. And that basically means that Dustfingers was totally double-crossed and betrayed. What he did? Well, he immediately betrayed Capricorn and helped free Maggie and Mo and Eleanor. And they managed to run away with Dustfingers' help. And another boy named Farid, who is from Arabian Nights, well, accidentally read out at least, well, he helps, he completely devotes himself to Dustfingers, and together they escape. And Farid is taken under Dustfinger as his apprentice. Then we run away to this nice little seaside village, where we meet the author of Inkheart. And as the situation goes, they had to tell the author everything in order to see if he had one last copy of Inkheart left. And he found out that these evil, evil ruffians had stolen them from him years before. And because of that, he didn't have any copies of his book, which honestly absolutely sucked. I mean, why couldn't he just have like a computer copy or something? Basta can't exactly come and burn that, can he? But of course, situation goes, we don't have anything. And our dear Fenoglio, who is the name of the author who wrote Inkart, is incredibly delighted to meet Dustfingers and his creations. He's so surprised that they had all come to life. And it was all just so great. But then, of course, Basta finds them. And they grab Maggie and Fenoglio, and they are taken away into Capricorn's village once again. And they are trapped there, and they have no rescue incoming. But Finoglio has an idea. This Capricorn, he wants to summon a deadly being called the Shadow from his world, which is the book. This Shadow is immortal and pitiless, and it is Capricorn's, well, ultimate ruthless men. Uh, not even a man, this devil almost like a like a demon friend you could even call him and it is so deadly and immortal invulnerable that it is the most dangerous being that has ever existed and if that thing comes over into our world well there isn't any way to stop it but not if Finoglio could help it they have a plan and there was a plan that Mo had originally come up with and it was that since Finogly was the author, he could technically maybe edit the story. And he uses he, he uses it. He uses it to change the story and change Shadow's destiny. So if we read the version that Ka our dear Finoglio had ma made so that Maggie would read out loud to bring Shadow into the world that was slightly altered, I'll read it out loud, shall we? Because that alone is an incredible piece of art. Capricorn had many men, she began, and every one of them was feared in the surrounding towns and villages. They stank of all cold smoke, they stank of sulfur and everything that reminds you of fire. Whenever one of them passed by, people closed their doors and hid under the stairs with their children. They called them Firefingers and Bloodhounds. Capricorn's men had many names. They were feared by day, and by night they made their ways into dreams and poisoned them. But there was one who was feared even more than Capricorn villains. Folks called him the Shadow. He came only when Capricorn called him. Sometimes he was red as fire, sometimes gray as the ash, to which fire turns all that it devours. He darted out of earth as fast as flames licked their way up wood. His fingers and even his breaths brought death. He rose before his master's feet, soundless, faceless, scenting his way like a hound on the trail and waiting for his master to point to the victim. It was said that Capricorn had commanded one of the trolls who understood the whole art of fire and smoke to create the shadow from the ashes of his victims. No one was sure, for it was also said that Capricorn had order, ordered those who called the shadow to life to be killed, and that everyone knew was that he was immortal, invulnerable, and pitiless like his master. 
But, now that is the original pathogen. Well, if I read that as a fantasy book, oh my, that sounds like a super interesting villain. But, Finoglio edits it so that they can manage to fight back to Capricorn and free themselves. So this is the part that Finoglio added. Yet one night, a mid and starlit night, the shadow heard not Capricorn's voice when it was called forth, but the voice of a girl, and when she called his name he remembered. He remembered all those from whose ashes he was made, all the pain and all the grief. He remembered, and he was determined to be avenged. Avenged upon whose who were the cause of all this misfortune, whose cruelty poisoned the whole world. Indeed, he wanted revenge, so the shadow went to his master and reached out to him with ashen hands. And Capricorn fell down on his face and his black heart stopped beating. But she couldn't say it. She just couldn't. It had all been in vain. And then suddenly, Silman came behind her and said, and Mo took the from book from Maggie and without hesitation, he read, and Capricorn fell down on his face and his black heart stopped beating, beating, and all those who had gone burning and murdering with him disappeared, blown away like ashes in the wind. And with that finished sentence, all of Capricorn's men are wiped out of existence, except Basta, the magpie who is Capricorn's mother and a deadly adversary as well. They have managed to defeat Capricorn's evil, and they free everyone, and finally, Together, they go to Elena's home, and it is all over now. They had won. And honestly, honestly, it was one of the best fantasy books that I have ever read in a long while, and probably would be included in my top 12 or top 10 of my favorite fantasy book series. It was such a great and grand experience to read this book, and like always, your book quester, Aaron the book quester, Highly recommended. Well, I'll dig into book two, I guess. Bye, guys. Have a great day.